Welcome to the Q Podcast. Q is about conversation. If we're really concerned about ending poverty, we've got to be more concerned about creating justice. Our cultural products as Christians need to both defy and resonate with the culture. And God's doing amazing things. His church is expanding. His church is growing. It's not what's the purpose of my life. It's what is the purpose that's been assigned. Stay curious. Think well. Advance good. This is Q. Welcome to the Q Podcast. I'm Gabe Lyons. And today I'm doing an interview with somebody that's been around this world with us for a long time and somebody we all need to hear right now. It's Annie F. Downs. She's a best-selling author, speaker, a great podcast host. If you haven't heard That Sounds Fun, her podcast, it's amazing. Subscribe to that. Be a part of that. Uh, She's the author of a book called 100 Days to Brave and Remember God and now has a new book coming out called That Sounds Fun, The Joys of Being an Amateur the power of falling in love, and why you need a hobby. And this month, we have begun the Q Book Club. And part of the book tour that we're doing every month is introducing you to an author and a conversation that we believe in this community is important for us to be learning about, to be challenged by, to be inspired by. And so I hope you'll be a part of that with us. I also want to encourage you, if you're listening and you love Annie F. Downs, you know what an inspiring speaker she is, how many of the next generation listen to her and follow her. She's going to be a part of our Q Union program that takes place across this country on college campuses this spring. And if you've never heard about Q Union or you're connected to a college, college student, maybe you're on faculty there, part of a staff, learn more about Q Union at qunion.co. But this is the program we've created to equip talented young leaders, student leaders to give talks to their peers. They deliver three nine-minute talks on their local campus about current issues, while we also feature people like Annie F. Downs talking about the topic of how to manage social media and not let it manage you. We're also this year going to have Kurt Thompson, a neuroscientist, talking about mental health. And these kinds of topics are so important right now for young students, for people who want to serve God, who are Christians, who have faith, but are also trying to navigate the difficulties of their generation, the challenges of our world, and wanting to do that with confidence and joy. And so Annie's going to be a part of that. If you're connected in any way, you know somebody on staff at a college who would want to host this and gift this to their students, qunion.co, where you can learn more about it. But now let's listen into my conversation with Annie Downs. Well, Annie F. Downs, it is so great to have you back as part of the Q Ideas conversation. Hi, Gabe. Thanks for having me. I love getting to chat with you. I mean, most people don't know, but, you know, several years ago, we used to do something called Q Women. Mm -hmm. And you were a big part of helping us curate these conversations that were around people thinking well, being really informed about yeah. culture, dealing with some heavy stuff, some light stuff. But um, you and I have gotten to work together at that level, which has mm-hmm. always been fun. Yeah. And it's just been so great to see how God used your voice to encourage so many others and the platform growth and all that you're doing right now to just just help people like have fun, have a better life, learn. And uh, we just love you. And I'm grateful that you're a part of this. Thank you. I feel the same way. I think, you know, part of what we get to do in our roles, any of us in in whatever way we're leading is we get to decide what are we leading people toward? (laughs) You know, (laughs) like what is our Pied Piper sound going to lead people toward? And, And so I feel like it's such an honor that, that God keeps opening up doors for me to walk people toward what I think is, abundant life living and, and abundant life conversations. And so I'm, I'm having a great time. Well, I was excited to talk to you today because, you know, at Q Ideas, we talk about a lot of heavy topics. I mean, we talk mm-hmm. about anything you can imagine that's a controversial topic or issue, a current issue. People are trying to learn. It can get a little academic and, and scholarshipy, and, you know, it, it's not always fun. Mm-hmm. And, and that's like a beef sometimes, you know, even at our events, you know, we talk about all these topics, but where's the levity? We all need that as human beings. And then there's you, you bring levity, <laughs> you bring a lot of fun. And today for our listeners, I'm excited for us to just have some fun today talking about why that's so important and why fun has to be a part of our life, our conversations, even when we're talking about heavy stuff, mm-hmm. it doesn't all have to be heavy. So Educate me a little bit. Why do I need more fun in my life? Yeah, I think all of us, after getting through 2020 and still into 2021, I, I think there's a, a worldwide desire to exhale and to have fun and, and to jump back into these things that used to be really fun for us. 
that we feel like we've lost a little bit. And and the thing about fun is it is considered a really simple thing because we've talked about it since we were kids. We've always talked about having fun. It's been a word that you knew as, as long as you've been speaking, probably. But there there's a different thing that happens when you're an adult. And when you have the responsibilities that we have now, when you have to have the conversations that Q has now. I mean, the reason we need Q ideas is because there are really deep, important things going on in the world and we need to think about them well. But also we remember what it was like when we didn't have to worry. Yeah. <laughs> and and so there's this balance we have to find between uh, mourning what is lost of the simplicity of our childhood and mourning that we actually can't go back to what uh, to unknowing what we know. In the book, I call it, it's our understanding. We have an understanding now that we didn't have a couple of years ago or in, when we were young. Right. And now that we understand some things, how do we find fun and relief and joy in this season without going to escapism. Yeah. And that's a tough balance, right? Is, is we can try to escape the stress or escape as a coping mechanism, but you're talking about this in a healthy way that this is just a part of our rhythms. We need to be playing more. We need to have hobbies in our life, even the power of falling in love and why you need a hobby. I love how you capture these concepts Let's talk about them for just a minute. So the power of being an amateur, sometimes for leaders, there's a sense they have to know everything. They have to already come into the room having figured it out. They're an expert. They're a thought leader. They're educated. Everybody's looking to them to educate them. And yet you're saying, wait a second, where, where did you pick up that idea? Why can't we find ourselves again not being great at everything? What What's the value in that for leaders? Yeah. I mean, I think reflecting again, if we reflect back on the last year, before the last year, there were opportunities where we thought, well, I'm the expert in this field, so I won't talk about it. But in the last year, like it just came to a place where particularly leaders in the church, but leaders all over the place, like we we don't get to not have the hard conversations anymore. We don't get to wait to where the expert to talk about racial justice or equality or how men and women interact in the church or what how we've grown up in faith versus where it's going now we we don't have the luxury of waiting until we're an expert we get to it's why it's called the joy of being an amateur we get to step in these conversations while we're still learning of course there's wisdom because we've been around like we've lived years so there's wisdom we get to bring to these conversations but if we keep waiting until we know everything we'll actually never have the conversation yeah. And that's really where the concern is. So we got to jump in. Well, you're one of the most curious people I know. And we talk about that, that idea of staying curious. And I, and I hear you saying that, that we should be some of the most curious people ever. And, you know, one of the ways to be curious is to just keep asking the question, why? Yeah, that's <laughs> and it. And when somebody gives you the answer, why? Yes. And you just keep, keep going. And for you, Annie, you've been asking why, I'm sure, of people for a long time, because you, mm-hmm. you like to get to the bottom of people's motivations and who they are. But sometimes leaders are careful to cover that over and just kind of present the facade that they think everybody's expecting of them. And I think, and I know for me, I do better when I get the why question and it Mm -hmm. forces me to, to go deeper. The other, the other thing you point out is the need for us to have hobbies. And, you know, this last year, I think some people realize that man, they'd gotten away from some hobbies. Mm -hmm. They were used to maybe being in artificial air and space and uh, cars and and all of a sudden they found themselves at home or needing to get outside. You know, I look at like Home Depot and how their stock went up and people doing projects and using their hands again. And there's like these things starting to happen in human beings that are reminding them, I'm I'm not just a robot, I'm a human and humans have hobbies. So What are some of your hobbies and why did you decide to talk about hobbies as a way of having fun? Well, by definition, as you said, hobbies are the things we do just for fun that do not make us any money. And and so let's combine that with the amateur conversation for a second, because what happens with high achieving people and most leaders are high achievers is once you get practiced in something, someone tells you to start selling it. Right. Like if you get really good at making cookies, well, then you should you should sell those down at the farmer's market. Or if you become really good at teaching or leading on a certain topic, well, then you should have a course that we all pay for. Right. Right. Like no one is allowed to leave anything in the hobby space anymore. We either don't try it or everyone else tells us to get paid for doing it. Yeah, and that's so a great point. Like we're trying to wild? monetize. Yes. Yeah, we just try to monetize everything. What is that? Is that just capitalism? Like 
gone um, gone crazy. Yeah, I think it is. That's I think how it we is. think. We have so lost the ability to let people do things really well just because they do them. Yeah. Versus let it, asking them to do them so we can pay them for it. Mm. It, it is. It, I think it is the capitalism thing. I think it's a little bit of the loss across the board of amateur being something that we're allowed to be. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so the reason we need hobbies is for, especially for high achievers, especially for leaders, you need to be doing things you don't get paid to do. And you need mm-hmm. to be doing things that do not, I think you should make things. I think you should create things, but you need to be doing things that are not like trying to further an agenda that are just beauty, <laughs> yeah. that are just Man, that's fun, good. that are just good. And so whether it's cooking something in the kitchen or pulling together a, a game to play outside with your kid. Or writing a poetry that you just share for fun. There are a lot of ways to have hobbies, to make things, and to really d- use your time well, not to be wasteful, to use your time well that that allows something to stay in the hobby place. Yeah, it reminds me of this idea that when God, you know, calls us to do things like like things have instrumental value and you know, I, I think of like a music artist where their belief theologically is I should make music because it's going to lead people to Jesus. And so that mm-hmm. that gift of making music is being used as an instrumental value. But the idea that these things have intrinsic value, that God's designed you as an artist to create music and creating that music beautifully brings glory to him, brings honor mm-hmm. to him, whether mm-hmm. you very specifically lead somebody to Jesus through it. And and I guess I take you down that long metaphor journey to say the hobby piece feels like we've lost the sense that it has intrinsic value, that God designed us yeah. as human beings to enjoy his creation, to yes. go bird watching. I mean, I've picked up bird mm-hmm. watching over the last like six years. Yeah. And when it hits springtime and birds are migrating, like there's nothing more beautiful than taking out a pair of binoculars and mm-hmm. zeroing in on, you know, the, the yellow warbler, my favorite mm-hmm. bird. Yeah. And just seeing the beauty of the feathers and, and the way it works and operates. And, and yet, we have started to learn, as you said, that our time always has to have this instrumental value of making money. And instead, it's like God's saying, no, the intrinsic value is you're, you're worthwhile yeah. if you're not producing and yep. you're just enjoying. And, and so uh, thank but you. Mike, for, can I ask you a question in that? Yeah, I, yeah. I just as your friend, tell me what it is about bird watching. Why, why did you even start? I love the slower pace. I love when I look at birds just like anything God's made, but that, that one with binoculars, it's like amazing. You don't really get to see birds much. Other animals yeah. I feel like we have, we can see them a little f- for longer periods of time. They kind of come and go. It's quick. Yeah. And when I understood how migration works, we used to live in New York City and there was a bird watcher. I mean, this is how I got exposed to it. He gave a talk at Q, one of our Q Ideas events. Uh-huh. And then he happened to be in New York in Central Park. And he goes, did you know Central Park is where the most birds migrate through during this particular couple of weeks in late April. And I said, no, I had no idea. I wouldn't imagine bird watching in Central Park was like a thing. Right. And he's like, but you got to think about it. As they're, as they're moving north, they're seeing concrete jungle everywhere. And all of a sudden they see this big, you know, I don't even know how many square miles the park is, but they see this big field of green and this is where they stop. And so you get to see birds from all over the world yeah. in this particular park. And so he went out there with me, he, he guided me, showed me what to look for. And that began my journey. And now, now this gets into like accomplishment. That's this okay. Is, this is the funny thing about bird watching is you have this thing called a life list. And oh, yeah. when you, every time you see a unique bird, you write it down in your life list, which is your list of birds you've seen throughout your entire life. So mm-hmm. what that means is when I've been, you know, in other parts of the world or different regions, I'm always looking for like a unique bird and then I add yeah. it to my list. And so anyway, it's just been a fun way to appreciate God's creation, learn more about nature and wildlife. Yeah. But it's become one of those hobbies for me that I enjoy. But let me tell you two things I learned about you in, in, in a fun way just now. Number one, I want you to hear there's nothing wrong with accomplishing things while you're having fun. Like, and while you're being an amateur, like I like cooking all the way through cookbooks. Yeah. And it's not wrong if I succeed at that. So that's fine. But but an interesting thing you said, Gabe, is when you talked about the birds flying over the cement, but seeing the uh, green space of Central Park mm-hmm. and that being what really what connects you with bird watching. I mean, isn't that what you do with Q Ideas too? 
is you, we all are forever flying over cement and you show us where the green is. Mm. And so it's very interesting to me that oftentimes the fun that we choose actually really aligns with our purpose, but we don't know that until we ask why. Yeah. And so wow. that's you, super cool to me. You really cool know how to, to pull this together. Yeah. I feel like I'm on the That Sounds Fun podcast and you just interviewed <laughs> me. And yet we're on the Q Ideas podcast and I'm just interviewing well, you. Well, I just didn't want to miss it. I didn't want to miss the why behind it. I was just really interested. Yeah. I think that's, that's really great. cool. And that's why we need to keep asking why when we're sorting through what sounds fun to us is because it often will reveal things about our purpose and our mission and our joy if we will just keep mm. asking why. Mm-hmm. Well, you do such a good job of helping us, you know, think deeper. And as we look at this cultural moment where there is a lot of intensity, there's a lot of pressure, a lot of people trying to navigate uh, a new type of economic circumstance or Mm -hmm. looking at a future that's just not as clear as maybe they thought it once was, um, it can feel like they don't have time to have fun. It's like, no, the pressure's on. Like, I gotta, I gotta find a job. I've got to find a career. I've got to figure mm-hmm. out my future. Um, what would you say to that person right now about the value of, of taking the time to do this and, and what this does for our soul when we really yeah. do enjoy what's around us? Yeah. Well, I think if they just hearing your bird watching story tells people what it does for our soul, right? I mean, it just is a, it slows us down. It gives us a reminder of purpose that it opens us up to new experiences that if we're willing to not be an expert at them, we can really enjoy them. But how do we fit them into our lives? I mean, how do we choose fun when there's so much else that is asking for our time? I mean, the, the reality is how, how do we choose exercise when everything else is asking for our time? Well, we know it matters for our health. <laughs> and right. and how do we choose to worry about our bank account and budget and balance our bank account at the end of the month when we really don't have time to do that? Well, because we need it for financial health. And I would say that really for your overall mental health, you've got to start putting, even if it's a 30 minute block once a week, whether you're with your family or whether you're single, no matter what your life place is, if you will just put a 30 minute block on your calendar and go every week, I'm going to have fun. The interesting thing that happens, Gabe, if you do like one thirty to two o'clock on Saturdays, I'm going to have fun. Well, all week leading up to that, you're thinking, what do I do for fun? How am I going to fill 30 minutes? Right. And so you're thinking about it. You're probably talking to people about it, which actually fun is the most fun in community. You're talking to people about it. And by the time you get to Saturday, not only do you get to do something that's fun, but you've really sorted out something about yourself. And so it's worth that 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be two hours and it doesn't have to be flying on a plane and taking two weeks. It can be a 30 minute window once a week that will really start teaching you. And I mean, it is a teacher and a gift (laughs) to give yourself that 30 minutes. I mean, we don't have time to talk about Sabbath, but you know how I feel about that. Everybody, I think, should be taking a Sabbath um, to help our brains and bodies rest. But, But putting that 30 minutes in your calendar will actually affect your whole week. Well, I think as you describe this, I mean, what you're talking about are healthy rhythms. We talk about that, Rebecca and I, a lot on our Rhythms for Life podcast and and the need for us to have these rhythms in our life that help us rest, uh, restore, connect, and create. Mm -hmm. And that all that's part of our renewal as a human being, and it helps our mental health. And, And today, mental health is one of the top concerns that so many people have for our kids, yeah. for our friends. We know that suicide rates are up, that the world is feeling heavy for a lot of people. Yes. And these types of habits, these types of rhythms, while they can seem like they're not producing something really efficient or they're not leading towards some end that's going to help us, I think we just have a, have a total mental reset on this yeah. and understand that, no, these, these are essential. Exercise is essential. What I'm eating is essential. Having mm-hmm. a hobby, hey, that's not optional anymore. Right. I need a hobby. I know Rebecca told me this year, she's like, you played golf so much more two years ago. And you were a little more pleasant to be around than this last year <laughs> when you played very little golf. Because again, I felt the stress of the year and I don't, the kids are home. I can't go play golf for four or five hours. Yeah. And so I stopped doing it as much. And, and I think there was a cost of that in our relationship or in my mental uh, ability. And, and so yeah. I say that to just say to other leaders, we must take time for this, as Annie's telling us. We must mm-hmm, carve out the mm-hmm. time, not only for Sabbath, but even during the week, finding these moments where 
we just sit back and we're not producing and we enjoy things and we yeah. do have fun. Um, yeah. And today, Annie's reminding us of that. So Annie, as, as, as we conclude, um, what's one of your favorite hobbies that you've picked up in the last couple of years that many people may not even know, unless they're big listeners of your podcast, maybe, yeah, they, yeah, maybe yeah. they would know, but tell, tell us one of the hobbies you enjoy. Out, uh, on the Rhythms of Renewal podcast with you and Rebecca, you and I talked about cross-stitching. And so right. I won't talk about cross-stitching here. We'll let them go hear our stories over there. But the other thing I, I mentioned a minute ago, the other thing I've really enjoyed is reading cookbooks and cooking my way through cookbooks. I think yeah. that's part of what happened in 2020 is as since I'm not married yet and don't have kids yet, I'm just feeding myself. And so it was either order in food every day or like, figure out how to use your kitchen better. <laughs> and so I just <laughs> right. started finding cookbooks that I love and starting at the front and going all the way to the back and trying as many recipes as I could. And it, it is really fun. It feels like you get to know the cookbook author a little bit mm. and figure them out and, and get to know their personality. So that's been a hobby I've picked up lately and it leads to wow. a lot of food being dropped off at friends' houses, but it has been really, <laughs> really fun. That's awesome. Well, we just love having your perspective represented here. And I would say to everybody here, make sure you subscribe to the That Sounds Fun podcast. Every every week and sometimes multiple times a week, Annie is introducing you to other people who are having fun and they're finding ways to enjoy these hobbies. And I think that's such a great encouragement. We all could use more of that. So follow her there. And don't forget to get her new book, That Sounds Fun, The Joys of Being an Amateur, The Power of Falling in Love, and Why You Need a Hobby. It's a quick read. It's a great, encouraging read. And especially if you have people in your life who you know this season has been a struggle, send them this book, gift this to them. Let this be something that brightens their day, that reminds them of who they really are, and reminds them of some of those unique talents that they have, that they enjoy, the fun that they have. Uh, that they could get back into or maybe practice in their new rhythms so that they start mm -hmm. to sustain their mental health. So Annie, thank you for being with us today. And we hope you continue to bring a lot of laughter and fun to everybody you encounter. Thanks, Gabe. Thanks so much for having me. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it inspired you to get out and play some golf or watch some birds. We're coming into that spring season before long, and it's a good time to try that and to enjoy that. I also wanted to just let you know that this conversation with Annie, it's all part of something we're doing new through our Q Media platform. It's our Q Book Tour. And we're essentially every month featuring a book that we think our community would really enjoy and benefit from reading. And this month, it's That Sounds Fun. So I hope you'll pick up Annie's book, read it, Enjoy it with other people in the Q community. And then if you aren't a part of Q Media, you can have access for 30 days and be a part of this book tour where I'm going to have more conversations with Annie. We're going to talk even deeper about these hobbies. How do we start to practice them? And you can learn more about that and take advantage of this free trial at qideas.org slash book tour. So I hope you enjoy this conversation. Share it with friends who need it. Encourage people. Let's as a community continue to be the kind of people that value hobbies, value being an amateur, value having fun, and value the beauty of knowing that we're made and loved and accepted as being people who are made in the image of God. It's not about what we produce. It's not about how we perform, but it's about just being a son or a daughter of Him. And I hope that encourages you and those who needed to hear that today will feel that and will feel God's love and His care for you. 